In this video, we're going to use Microsoft Word to type mathematically. We're going to use Equation Editor, and we're going to use Latex uh, Syntax to help allow us type math objects more easily. So to open up the Math Editor, if you're on a Mac, you can hold down the Control and then the Plus Equals button. If you're on a PC, you hold down the Alt and the Plus Equals button, and it would open up this uh, Equation Editor box. And when it opens, you'll see that the toolbar changes up above with all of the math objects. Um, you can use the toolbar if you want, but you'll find that if you type using the latex code, you don't have to hunt around for symbols. You'll be able to do this much more quickly. So if we start with some simple math, such as fractions and exponents, you'll see that if I type 1 slash 2, um, I want this to look like a fraction 1 half. So that's why I'm typing it in the math equation editor. If I want it to convert it, I hit the space bar, and that executes the conversion. That's called the professional look. So you'll see up here there's professional and there's linear. Before I hit the space bar, that was the linear. After I hit the space bar, it converts it to professional. So to type a fraction becomes easy. You just type your numerator slash denominator, hit space. And then if we had a variable raised to a power, I would do x caret and then the exponent. Now if I want to convert it, I just hit the space bar. We'll see that as we do this, we can do it much more rapidly as we become comfortable with it, and we can type math quickly like that. Um, if I hit the right arrow, I will exit the equation editor, and now if I start typing, you'll notice that it moved it uh, to the left and justified it. If we mix math syntax with regular text, it changes it from the first view, this is known as display math, to the second view, this is known as inline math. So if we want our math in line with the text, we just type it together and it'll change the size and fit it in. If we don't want that, if we want the bigger view, we don't put any text next to it. Um, when typing math documents, it's very common to see that uh, the text is sometimes not in line with the mathematics. So the equation for Finding the roots of a quadratic so we can put the quadratic formula down below control plus opens up the math editor and I can say x is equal to I'm going to make my fraction bar and hit space I'm going to go back to the numerator I use my arrow key to backtrack x is equal to negative b. Now I want the plus or minus symbol. So backslash is what we use when we want to use latex code. And pm is plus minus, and it gives me the plus minus symbol. Let's do that again. Backslash, and if I do mp, it'll be minus plus. Backslash, plus minus, space converts it. Now I want the square root. Backslash, sqrt, parentheses, parentheses, and space, that gives me my square root. I can type my expression underneath here. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, hit the space, minus 4ac. I'm going to hit the right arrow to exit the square root. I'm going to hit the right arrow to advance to the denominator. And this all goes over 2a. And then I hit the right arrow to get out of the fraction, and again to get out of the math editor. So you just keep hitting to the right to advance, you hit to the left to retreat. So you can see that right now the equation is on its own line, that's called display math. But if I were to go in front of here and I delete and move it back, now it's in line with the text. We see that it's made to uh, fit smaller so that it fits better with the text. This is inline math. I hit enter. This is now display math. It's on its own line. And that's very popular in math articles. If, if you publish a paper in college, you'll see that this type of formatting is used often. So what are some other advantages to using the math equation editor? Well, let's hit the control plus to open up the equation editor. Again, if you're on a PC, it's alt plus. And Backslash means we're going to use latex code. 
and latex is being found in more and more applications. It's being used in Word. It's now being used in Google Docs. It's being used in GeoGebra, um, and there are other sites that are using it. Latex code is now being implemented with HTML5 to help uh, make mathematics get typeset properly in web pages. So we have it showing up more and more. It's an advantage, or it's a, a good thing to learn. It'll give you an advantage in uh, typesetting math in different areas. So the backslash in Word is telling us, is us telling the computer we're going to enter some latex code. If I want to use a Greek letter, I can say alpha. I don't have to hunt for these symbols. By, by using the latex code, I can find it quicker. And let's go delta. So I don't have to go searching for these. Now you'll notice I did alpha and I did delta. And when I spell them, I use lowercase letters. Well, that'll give me the lowercase Greek letter. If I do a capital D for delta, I get the capital Greek letter. If I do the capital uh, A in alpha, I'll get the capital Greek letter alpha. So we can get alpha, beta, gamma, delta, just backslash, type out the name. If it's the capital version you use, you start with a capital letter. If it's a lowercase version that you want, you leave it lowercase. Um, if we want special symbols, backslash C-O-N-G is congruent. Uh, if I'm typing up something in geometry, backslash angle A-B-C, backslash C-O-N-G, I hit space to convert it, backslash angle, space to convert it, um, X-Y-Z, so I have angle A-B-C is congruent to angle X-Y-Z. Angle A is equal to 49 backslash degree. So you can pretty much guess your way to many of the symbols. If you don't know the symbols or, or you're not able to guess it, you can look up latex syntax online. I'm giving you some of the most popular ones. If we want to use a right arrow, we can embed that. Maybe you want a double right arrow. I use the capital letter. So we have the lowercase right arrow, we have the uppercase right arrow, and you get these different symbols. Omega lowercase, omega uppercase. Backslash bar. I hit two spaces that time to get the template there, and now I can do AB, and that gives me segment AB. Backslash NE is not equals. Backslash Greater than or equal to is GE, backslash less than or equal to is LE, so we can get these symbols also. Um, if we do backslash rectangle and then parentheses, oops, spell it right, rectangle, maybe it has to be a lowercase r. Ah, that's correct, R-E-C-T. So this will allow us to encase something into a rectangle. So let's do that again. We open up the equation editor, backslash R-E-C-T. We hit space. We have the rectangle. Now we put the parentheses, whatever we want, boxed in the rectangle. So I can do 6x squared minus 3x. Close the parentheses. When we hit space, the rectangle is going to encapsulate the equation or the expression. So if we want a rectangle emphasis on something, we use the backslash R-E-C-T. Again, a lot of these are latex commands, and you can look them up, and this gives us an easy way to incorporate math into our documents. And again, we can write these as inline math, so linear equation, 
And this becomes helpful because we can type everything up in Word, and if we want to embed our mathematics with text into a website, such as a free Google site, I would just screenshot uh, one paragraph at a time and if this was, uh, say, a paragraph of mathematically uh, typeset information that I'd like to put onto the website so it has the proper um, math representation, I just did a screenshot of it and here's my screenshot. This image now I can just embed into a website and it would show the proper mathematics. This is uh, not anything very meaningful, but whatever we type up with the, the math set in properly, we can now put this in as an image. Um, and Google Sites is a free tool. We can plug this right into a Google Sites page. And let's see what that would look like. Sites.google.com. New Sites. New Sites has everything made to be easier. I'm going to go to this untitled site that I was playing around with. So in my previous video, I had put a interactive GeoGebra web page in here. Now underneath, I'm going to add an image because I had screenshot my map as an image. And now I can resize it so that it fits in here. And we can come up to preview to see what it looks like on the website. So this is the interactive GeoGebra page I had made in another video. And now this is the screenshot of the mathematics that I typed up in Word. Um, maybe I want to make the text a little bit smaller. It looks like it's getting a little fuzzy as I stretched it out to that size. So I made it smaller. Let's look at it again. to GeoGebra, and we see it looks a little bit sharper now. It's easier to read. So we can use Word to type up our mathematics in line or with special display math. Um, using LaTeX commands, we can easily access many of the symbols in math. And then we can screenshot it and embed it into uh, a website such as the free Google sites.